So this week, we're going to look at the other half of sedimentology, which is the one I call the better half of sedimentology. With my colleagues, you've explored classic systems. Today, we're going to explore carbonate systems. I've worked on amazing carbonate system in my career, and most of those are actually on land. So we're going to disembark from the JR, and I'm going to take you around a few outcrop and different locations to show you some fundamental principles of carbonate sedimentology. So one thing I'd like to say, and this is a good news, is that you've learned already a lot about sedimentology. And you don't have to learn everything from scratch when you study carbonates. A lot of what you've learned in classic sedimentology is equally applicable to carbonate sedimentology. Because carbonates are sediments. So let, let me give you a couple of examples. You've learned in classics that the more you transport a sediment, the better sorted it becomes. Well, great news, it's also true for carbonates. The more you transport a carbonate sediment, the more sorted it will be. So the higher the hydrodynamic of the water, the system in which the sediment is deposited, the greater the sorting will become. It's also true that the greater the transport, the greater the rounding of the grains will be. And that's both for clastic and for carbonates. So the point I am making is that carbonates are sediments. So do not forget your sedimentology because it's completely applicable to carbonate settings. You will see bed form, you will see cross bedding, you will see all the things that you're familiar with in carbonates and in clastics. But there are, of course, differences. And perhaps the best way to express this difference is to borrow the sentence from Wolfgang Schlager, a famous carbonate sedimentologist, who said, carbonates are born, not made. And that kind of sums it up. It's because there is a, an influence from biology on carbonates that they are different than classic sediments. Let me explain what this sentence truly means. And the first thing we can do is look at clastic systems. In this case, I'm showing you the coast of uh, the Western United States, California. And the point I want to make is that in a clastic system like the one I'm showing you, all the sediments are coming from the rivers. So the rivers bring clastic sediment from land into the ocean, and they call point source system. The, the point of the source is the river. Once the sediment get into the uh, margin, into the continental margin, they are then transported by current. So in this case, it is the, um, the uh, longshore current that flow around the California coast that transports the sediments, so from north to south, following, following the Ekman transport. And those sediments eventually end up in the deep sea once they intersect canyons, there is a number of deeply cut canyons dating from the last glacial maximum that shunt the sediment deeper into the system. So that's how a classic system works. You can predict where the source is by knowing where the continent is and where the river mouth is. It's your point source. And then everything is transported further and further away from the source. And of course, that means better sorted, better rounded, etc. For carbonate, it's very different because carbonates are mediated by biology. So that means carbonates will grow wherever ecological conditions are favorable. So here I'm showing you an example of atolls. Atolls are carbonate islands in the middle of the ocean. They can be really in the middle of the Pacific. They can be pretty much anywhere. In this case, we're looking at the Maldives. And the Maldives grow where they are because the ecologic conditions are ideal for them. The middle of the Pacific Ocean is a desert in terms of nutrients. We'll, we will see that this is important for carbonates. And they have found shallow water conditions which are absolutely essential for autotroph corals. 
So these are great conditions for corals and great conditions for carbonate to grow. And you can see the influence of ecology on where your source of carbonate is. And the source of carbonate is termed a carbonate factory.